Welcome back, and if you're new, welcome. It is a super windy day. They just started harvesting all of the cornfields out back, so we've had like snow of pieces of corn stalks blowing through the greenhouse. I got both my doors open. It's like 65 degrees and super windy. We've got like 55 mile an hour gusts coming through. So you can see our shade cloth moving around a bit because it is wickedly windy. Today we're discussing four methods we're going to use to heat our greenhouse for free this winter, this 50 foot greenhouse. We did this last winter and all of these methods were very successful for us and they all require very little input as far as money goes. And once you've got your initial investments out of the way, you don't have to spend a dime to heat your greenhouse or house or whatever you plan on heating with any of these methods. So if all that sounds interesting to you, that's pretty much all we do here on our channel, on our homestead. So please consider subscribing to the channel if we're still here and don't blow away. <laughs> so let's get into today's video. We have passive heating. We have all of the free methods of obtaining heat from the sun. Now we use all of these bricks like down here and we've painted them with our DIY natural egg paint. You could spray paint them but that can poison your soil so we try and use natural paints when we're heat sinking our stones that are in contact with our plants, roots, and soil. So it's as simple as that. Creating a darker surface. We have this tank over here that is used for our methane but we have a tank right next to me that is full of water that is very warm. So all day it sweated and then it finally warmed up and equalized with the temperature outside and now it's going to hold all of that thermal energy as heat into the night and re-release it into the greenhouse. So having stone, rock, sand, Sand, water, clay bricks, uh, sandbags, whatever you can use as a thermal heat sink to naturally and freely heat the greenhouse and store that energy is your best bet. And that is the easiest way to heat a greenhouse during winter. And I just wanted to touch on all the main items you use to store heat as energy into. So the next method uses the sun, but not in the same ways that we were just talking about. So we have a 100 watt solar panel. We've got about three or 400 watts of power powering this greenhouse throughout the winter time and the summer and we have no electricity ran out here yet. So everything we've done has been off of solar power and solar power alone. So we're gonna jump on down here and just go check out all these systems real fast. We've got our little solar box tucked up underneath our bench here powering a variety of fans. There's a fan behind those bricks up in here, a fan powering our compost heater. So we've got quite a few fans running and this is the important one. This one runs right into the ground and it comes up over here on the other side. So coming back down here, we have our geothermal tube and this has been full of water because we had a split down at the end and we got water in it from overwatering and flooding the greenhouse out. It took the path of least resistance down into our tube as far down as it could go. And we finally got enough water out and evaporated and pumped out that it is flowing air through it again. Geothermal is what we're talking about. That's what we're powering down here. So we have constant temperatures that are getting pushed through the earth. We're pulling those temperatures off the earth like a climate battery. So all winter long, we were able to pull like 50, 52 degrees, 55 degrees through this geothermal thermal and then we split it off into both of our tunnels and we were able to heat and keep all of our plants alive sprout basically right after the new year and we're in zone four or five here so we were able to pinpoint that geothermal right where we wanted it and it was super beneficial to us so we're going to build upon that continue experimenting with it and get a better fan to force a little bit more air through and see what kind of results we get this can be pretty easily achieved as long as you can dig up or bury some hose or pipe tubing you can run water, you can run air, and you can use those grounded temperatures, those geothermal temperatures, poor man's geothermal, to push water or push air and pull back about 50 to 55 degrees into your greenhouse or into your home. I'm willing to answer any questions anyone's got on our geothermal. We do have only one two brand because I really didn't have a whole lot of extra. So the next one is the most interesting to me, compost heating. So. We heated our greenhouse with compost heat the entire last winter. Our pile was active for at least seven to eight months and pieces of it were active for almost 10 months. Almost a year, this compost stayed warm, 80 to 100 degrees, just breaking down and doing its thing. We've been able to transfer air and water from inside our greenhouse out to our compost, heat it up, and then bring it back in here without any exchange of gases or vermin or anything else that could come off of the compost to negatively impact the greenhouse. So we're able to just draw only the heat. And we've used a lot of different systems and experimented over the last five, six, seven years 
And this is what we've came up with. Last year was the most productive and the largest pile we've ever built. We're still tweaking the system. I'm going to reconfigure it a bit for this year. We just got our load of wood chips out there and it is probably already heating up. It's been there for a day or two. So let's jump out there and check that out real quick. It's awful loud out here with all the wind, but we've got almost rolling up to 100 degrees there and it's still moving slowly. But that is just to show that those wood chips are ready to break down those are ready to get hot and those don't even have the added nitrogen that we're going to put in they're not as wet as they need to be there's a lot of things involved that actually bring those to life and make them last as long as i get them to coming back this is the remnants of last year's john payne heater going into the greenhouse we'll be pulling this up and reconfiguring the pile with a little bit different setup and we have a slew of videos coming on that itself let's head on back in the greenhouse house here. So pairing that free energy as heat from compost with free energy from the sun is a no-brainer. We've been able to heat our greenhouses for the last five or six years with just compost and solar power. Being able to provide any heat without any bills is absolutely amazing to me and we've been trying to share all of the experiments and all of the information along the way. We've discovered quite a bit by experimenting so we've tried to share all of that. We did experiment with a few different ways to pull heat off into the greenhouse. You can see our blue PEX hose here. Now that was underneath our tunnels that we had. We're about to put our tunnels up on this side of the greenhouse. This PEX tube stayed warm enough about 70 75 degrees throughout most of the winter that inside it pretty much kept everything alive we didn't have any negative impacts of a polar vortex we had some seriously cold temperatures blowing over this greenhouse and kept all of our plants alive compost heating is definitely a better alternative than paying for gas or paying for electricity to heat a greenhouse you could spend a small fortune trying to heat your greenhouse with gas electricity oil whatever and it could be very very costly so that led me to experimenting with my small greenhouse leading up to the big greenhouse and we tried to pull even more heat off of our compost but we needed a bigger pile we had about 21 to 25,000 BTUs per hour off of our compost pile last year and we're looking to have 50,000 or so BTUs per hour off of our compost pile this year the guy who dropped my wood chips off is bringing another load or a load and a half so I will have plenty of wood chips I just got to go get all of my nitrogen rich material collect our leaf bags like we did last winter and we will show the whole process of getting it fired up and getting it ready to heat this greenhouse through the entire winter the final way that we achieved free heating from our greenhouse was another small investment we spent about a hundred dollars on this stove back here a 1950s or 60s stove and we used our wood chips and we used wood pallets everything totally freely sourced same wood chips we used to compost to heat the greenhouse he brought another load in the middle of winter so we had a ton of wood chips that we were constantly drying out that we didn't need for our compost experimenting with that and making biochar and any free resource aside from waste oil we were able to achieve a lot of free heating and we used a lot of copper and heat exchangers and little pumps and solar power and we moved a bunch of water around our stack our exhaust piping and the base of the stove and we put a lot of heat into thermal masses like our water tank and we have a ton of videos covering that from last winter but that stove was super valuable I had never had a stove inside the greenhouse and I will never have a greenhouse without a stove so using simple solar power fans and pumps little 12 volt DC systems very simple to use we're able to pull a ton of heat extra heat off of that stove that would have just gotten funneled out and lost to the atmosphere and if you can see all of those bricks that we have we have maybe 250 bricks all the way around and those clay bricks are a much better alternative for storing that heat because clay has a lot of sand in it Sand is the best thermal mass storage there is so those bricks provide much better thermal storage than cement or concrete will so we loaded our bricks on the back wall there and we have fans blowing through them and stuff just tons of ways to use that extra heat from a wood stove and I encourage everybody to check out all the videos from last winter. I wanted to share all four methods because if you can't do one, you can probably do the other or vice versa, or you can find ways to extend the electricity or the gas you're using. There's lots and lots of build upons and add-ons that you can use to the already installed systems that you can really piggyback 
and extend all of that heat through the night and really conserve your resources as far as losing heat. Insulation is very important in the winter. We talk about that religiously also. There's a ton of factors that go into growing all winter. We just shared our growing all winter video. So aside from everything I've mentioned, we have a few other passive solar heating experiments that we do and I'm gonna be releasing a few videos on that as we're setting up our solar panel for this specifically. But we've got this nice little solar heater. We're gonna be installing this up. I redesigned it from last year, so hopefully we get better results. It worked really well last year, and I'm hoping for even better results this year. Just stopped here at this little potato bed. We've got a ton of little onion sprouts coming up and decent little potato growths there. Very, very cool to have potatoes in the greenhouse towards the end of October here. So I'd like to thank everybody for watching. Any questions, you know where to drop them. And until next time.